This is a lecture to help you understand a little bit more about the Jewish diaspora. It seemed to be a section that people didn't quite understand, so I wanted to give you a little bit more information about it. So, the Jewish diaspora started during the Neo-Babylonian Empire, which, if you think back to the four empires of Mesopotamia that we talked about, we talked about the Akkadian, we talked about the Babylonian, we talked about the Assyrian, and then the Neo-Babylonian. So this is the same empire of the Neo-Babylonians that we had mentioned before. You can see here on this map that the Neo-Babylonian Empire was purple. Uh, the Kingdom of Judah is this yellow area, and the empire of Jerusalem, or I'm sorry, the city of Jerusalem was that dot. So the Jewish diaspora during the Neo-Babylonian Empire was when some of the Jews were kept captive in Babylon. So the leader of the Neo-Babylonian Empire actually took them to Babylon, held them captive, and was not supportive of the Jewish people. Uh, practicing their faith. This was a big concern to the Jews because they were worried that they would lose their religion, that the religion of Judaism would stop existing. So there were a lot of people during this time period who rose up uh, to help start new practices to make sure that the religion of Judaism did continue. Uh, so the Neo-Babylonians were not accepting of the Jewish people. However, remember when we talked about the empires, the Neo-Babylonians were conquered by the Persians. So, after the Neo-Babylonians were over, you had Cyrus the Great, and Cyrus was actually allowing of the Jews to practice their religion. So the Jews returned to Judah, back to their homeland, back uh, to Jerusalem, and he, Cyrus and the Persians actually allow the Jews to practice their religion, and he actually allows them to build a temple. So this becomes the second temple of Jerusalem, uh, so that they can practice their religion there. After the Persians, uh, the Greeks come in, and they try to force the Jews to worship the Greek gods. Uh, the Jews rebel. There is a period of time where the Jews are fighting with the Greeks, uh, but ultimately in 164 BCE, the Jews are able to drive the Greeks from Jerusalem and reclaim their land there. So there was never really a period of time where the Greeks fully controlled the land of Judah. The next group that took over the territory was the Romans. So now that we've moved on to the Roman Empire, we're no longer looking at the Persians. The Greeks have been completely pushed out of Judah. And then over this period of time, the land becomes known as Judea. Um, in 63 BCE, and this is the date, you won't have to know the date, but just so you understand how long ago it was and when it happened, it was in 63 BCE that the Romans came and took over this territory. Um, the Romans were an extremely, extremely strong empire. You will come to learn about the Roman Empire in seventh grade. You'll talk all about where the Romans were and what land they came to claim. But for now, you just need to understand that the Romans came and claimed Judea or Judah. Here in purple, you can see just how much land the Romans actually came to control compared to how big the land of Judea or Judah was. So. You have to understand that the Romans, like we've talked about in the past, when they see people rebelling against them, they're going to act very quickly. So while the Romans were in power, there were a lot of people that were executed under Roman rule. Uh, at first, the Romans did allow the Jews to practice their religion and to live in their own territory. And in 22 BCE, so not long after they had come to control the territory, excuse me, so not long after they had come to control the territory, they appointed Herod. And Herod became a governor, uh, and he was going to expand the second temple, and they worked on this second temple for 46 years. And then the Jews rose up against the Romans. The Jews rose up in 66 CE. So you're talking about a long period of time that the Romans allowed the Jews to live on their land unaffected. Remember we talked about in class you have zero and then BCE is like negative numbers and they come before zero and then CE is after. So 66 CE is about 
80, 88 years after 22 BCE. So in 66 CE, it was when the Jews rose up against the Romans and decided they were ready for them to get out of their land. They thought they had a chance to fight and keep the Romans out of their land. And they were very mistaken. And if you see all this purple territory, you understand the Romans were very powerful. The Romans controlled a lot of land. So when the Jews tried to rebel, they were uh, sadly put down. And it was Titus, who I'm sure you remember the name Titus, who was the leader, the Roman military leader, who brought 60,000 soldiers to defeat the Jews. It was nowhere needed that number, but it was this massive show to prove to anyone who wanted to rise up against the Romans, you were going to be unsuccessful if you tried to fight against the Romans. So not only did they put down this rebellion, but they also destroyed the second temple during the 66 BCE rebellion. Um, the Jews were horrified, um, and then yet in 135 CE, Later, another generation of Jews revolt, and this is for the last time. Um, when they revolted, most Jews were forced uh, onto their final exile when the Romans won and put down that last Jewish rebellion. Uh, the Romans took control of all of the Jewish territory and forbid Jews from entering Jerusalem. Um, they were... This is the last time the Jews go on this diaspora. So the Jews are sent to live throughout the land. And then there's this big concern that, again, the Jewish faith is not going to last and is not going to remain a religion. One of the reasons that the Jewish faith lived on through this period of time was because of people like Yohanan ben Zakkai. Uh, ben Zakkai was a rabbi who wanted to preserve Judaism. Originally, he worked with the Jews to try to convince them to stop fighting against the Romans. He realized uh, that the Romans were going to continue to put down the Jewish efforts, so he really tried very hard to help the Jews understand that they were not going to be successful in fighting against the Romans, but he was unsuccessful. So in order to take the next step, he decided he would actually approach the Romans and try to get the Romans to help him or to allow for him to continue the survival of Judaism. So he had himself smuggled out of Jerusalem in a coffin, and he met with a Roman general, and from the Roman general named Vespasian, he gained permission to open a Jewish school. So other rabbis worked with him in this town of Yavne, and Yavne became this city where the Jewish school was opened. The reason that Ben Zakkai was allowed to open the school in Yavne was because he actually did this before the final uprising. He did this in the second to last uprising in 66 CE, so this was before the Romans had completely put down everything and refused to allow the Jews to enter their land. So because he had already set this up before the final exile, this allowed for the Jews to continue practicing their religions. Ben Zakkai and other rabbis then trained other people to become rabbis, to go back to their cities, to lead the worship in that city, and he made synagogues very important. And the synagogue was the place of Jewish worship, um, so other people went and built synagogues in their towns, and this is how Judaism was able to flourish even after the uh, holy site in Jerusalem was destroyed by the Romans. Because the religion stays so strong and there are enough people who still practice the religion um, for decade after decade after decade, um, in 1948 the Jewish state of Israel was created um, to bring the Jews back to the ancient homeland and Jews from around the world did move back to this land. So that is the timeline of what happened um, when Jews were in Judah and then Judea and the four empires that took over control of that land. So please let me know if you have any questions and hopefully that clarified for you this struggle that the Jews felt against the people that were trying to control their land.